so before this presentation is changed, I can make some personal comments. So, uh, Professor Kioski was, was particularly known as a very, very nice, uh, uh, nice uh, teacher. Students never complained about, about him. Everybody wanted to, to uh, be his student. What I specifically remember is that this was the times were difficult and, and Poland was not completely free country and one of students was involved in, in a really radical organization which was completely not allowed and, and Kijowski was a, was, was a vice dean at that point and police sent complaint to the, to the department about that student that he's a criminal and they gave a list of crimes and on, on the list one of crimes was traveling by public transportation without a valid ticket. So Professor Kijowski invited the student and gave him money for, uh, for to buy a prostitute. <laughs> So that gives you an idea how nice place <laughs> this department was and, and because we were somehow uh, secure and, and we could consider this as political asylum uh, as compared to what was going on outside of, of the, the walls of our <coughs> department due to people like, like Europe. So, uh, the title of the talk is the abbreviated. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the, the original title was, was, was longer. Is the essence of gravity? I don't remember this uh, event, <laughs> but I remember you, Jurek, as an intelligent and very active student, and you remain such till <laughs> no. now. <laughs> <laughs> going to teach you what is gravity and electromagnetism. <laughs> and those of you who know it may skip my talk. <laughs> okay, so everything we know about gravity comes from observations of the solar system. But people desperately look for generalizations because of cosmology, dark matter, and so on and so on. But extrapolation of a successful theory by 20 orders of magnitude from the solar system to the cosmic scale was never successful in the history of humanity. For example, the distance between classical and quantum physics is only eight orders of magnitude and it is a completely different story. So let us re-examine the meaning of general relativity and so I, I will propose you to uh, to look on, uh, to, to understand gravity from a completely different point of view, although very close to Einstein's original ideas. Okay, so as everybody knows, general relativity may be derived from this uh, variational principle. Later on, Einstein added lambda, then he considered it as the greatest mistake of his life, but I will convince you that no, 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 it was not a mistake. Then, for instance, Andrei Sakharov in the 60s added add such a term. Now there is a huge industry of people looking for such theories which are based on any uh, function of a scalar curvature. There are people who consider even more general Lagrangians <coughs> based on the entire uh, curvature tensor. Okay, so let us try to understand gravity from the very beginning. If there is no gravity, then the Newton first law is valid. Namely, there is an inertial reference frame. What is an inertial reference frame? It is just a system of coordinates such that the free motion corresponds to such a trivial second order uh, differential equations. However, we are uh, more, we know 
more than uh, Newton did. We know because of special relativity that the space cannot be separated from time. Therefore, our coordinates are always space-time coordinates and not space coordinates. Of course, you may ask, and so what is this dot? The dot is with us. Suppose we are in a spaceship traveling across the cosmos, and there is a uh, dot with respect to our time. We have our proper what, or for instance, with respect to hard breaks, something like that. And of course, uh, in Newton's theory, we have a global um, reference frames. But very often, we are forced to work with non-inertial, with any coordinate system, which are non not inertial. But it is very easy to recalculate these equations of motion to non-inertial coordinates. Yeah? So we consider uh, inertial as functions of non-inertial. We take first derivative. Uh, here I, I use summation convention, but in this uh, physically oriented community it is obvious. Then the second derivative. Now it is <coughs> nice to apply uh, the inverse matrix uh, to this equation. Then we <coughs> obtain this equation. This means that acceleration vanishes. Yeah. Then coordinate system is inertial if and only if the second derivative vanishes. Therefore, it is useful to introduce such an equivalence relation to global. At the moment, they are always global coordinate systems. They are equivalent if the second derivatives of uh, vanish. It is, the uh, relation is apparently non-symmetric, but it is symmetric. It is very easy to show that it is um, an equivalence relation. So uh, Newton uh, first law may be uh, formulated in the following way that God has chosen among all those uh, um, classes of equivalent systems, God has chosen one of them and that's all. This, is, this gives us a structure of space. And of course, mathematically, it is nothing but the but an affine structure of space-time, so it is trivial. It is useful to choose a special uh, letter for this combination of second and first derivative. Uh, so the motion in a non-inertial frame may be written this way. What I am telling you is absolutely trivial. We may multiply left and uh, both sides by m if you wish, and you may call right hand side uh, the force. This contains all those centrifugal, Coriolis, and so on, fictitious forces. OK, now let us go to gravity. So gravity may be formulated, theory of gravity, in an analogous way. I like to call it Einstein's first law. It is almost, almost the same. There is always an inertial frame, but only point-wise. At each space-time point separately, maybe probably there is no global inertial frame. So what does it mean? It means that at each space-time point, there are local coordinates such that freely at this particular point, same equation, however, only at this point. Of course, if we work in any an arbitrary coordinate system, then we may perform exactly the same calculation. And now we see that uh, our 
coordinate system x, y is also inertial at point m if the second derivatives vanish, but only at this point. Therefore, we may define the, again, the, uh, the um, equivalence relations. Two local, now local, coordinate systems in a neighborhood of a given point are equivalent if the second derivative vanish at this point. Now, an equivalence class with respect to this equivalence relation, it is an equivalence relation, anyway. frame, a reference frame. Now a collection of all those reference frames is a fiber bundle. Collections of all reference frames at all space-time points is a fiber bundle. Now, if we choose a coordinate system, say x, y, x is always a my coordinate system in which I write down my equations, then any reference frame, what is a reference frame? It is a just, just a class of equivalent reference frames. At this point, may be uniquely parameterized by the following table of numbers. It is just an easy observation. And But what is almost obvious, but it is nice that this table of numbers does not depend upon the choice of a representative within, within this class. So it is a nice parameterization. So given a, a coordinate system x, y, any reference frame may be uniquely parameterized by this table of numbers, and by definition this table of numbers is symmetric, because it is given by second derivatives. Therefore, x and gamma are coordinates in the bundle of frames, which is compatible with the bundle structure. So Einstein version of the first law means that at each space-time point there is a privileged reference frame which we call inertial frame, otherwise it is just a section of the frame bundle. Of course, mathematically it is nothing but by a symmetric connection. Of course, mathematicians who like to think about connection in terms of, of uh, for instance, causal formulation or uh, as a connection in a uh, frame bundle, they would like to have also non-symmetric connection. However, any non-symmetric connection splits into two uh, irreducible objects. Therefore, non-symmetric connection is not an ir irreducible object. The, the only symmetric connection is a reducible object because of the uh, because uh, bundle of frames uh, is equipped with this soldiering form with and so on and so on. Therefore, we may say that uh, in coordinate description, gravity is just a section. So I would say, what is gravity? I am teaching you. Gravity is a field of inertial frame. Okay. Of course, this is rather a trivial observation. In particular, if this table of numbers vanishes at some point, it simply means that those coordinates are simply inertial at this particular point. Uh, can I ask a question? Yeah. It is possible that you have two metrics which are often there is no metric. I will come to the metric. At the moment there is no metric. I claim that, yeah. Yeah, I soon I will come to the metric. There is no metric at the moment. 
Yes, but if you call this choice of gravity... You no, you, well, okay, I agree you may... Wait a moment, okay? So, uh, so gravitation... This free-falling elevator on a space ship, but only point, right, at a given point. Typically, inertial coordinates at a point are not inertial at neighboring points, unless space-time is flat in a neighborhood. So, uh, I'm going to skip, because uh, there is a part of a talk which I'm going to skip, where I uh, propose a new theory of, of uh, curvature. So, I will skip it. Let me only mention that this gamma may be interpreted in the following sense. It is a unique quadratic um, improvement of coordinates such which... Uh, okay, if we have any coordinate system and we want to improve that, them in such a way that they become inertial, so a quadratic term is necessary, and this gamma is precisely uh, has this interpretation. Now, let me only also mention that the third order terms in the expansion may be used to kill some derivatives of gammas. However, because, yeah, so in order to kill gamma, the, which means to pass to the uh, to inertial frame, we need a, a second order correction of coordinates. But using third order correction, we may kill some uh, part of partial derivatives of gamma, but not all of them, because this gamma is only symmetric in first two indices, whereas such a third term means that only a totally symmetric part of this W enters into, the, into a game. Therefore, we are able to kill only the totally symmetric part, which means that uh, what remains is an invariant. And I have a tendency to call this a curvature tensor, so the curvature tensor is a, um, a table of derivatives of gammas minus the totally symmetric part. This formula is valid only in, uh, when gammas vanish, but it is very easy to recalculate to any, uh, to any coordinate system. And this may be a definition of a curvature tensor. Of course, uh, this object has the following symmetries. It is symmetric in first two indices, and the totally symmetric part vanishes. But of course, you know Riemann tensor, which is totally, uh, which is anti-symmetric in last two indices, and its anti-symmetric part vanishes. And they are absolutely equivalent, because if you know Riemann tensor, and symmetrize it in f it first two, you obtain my curvature and vice versa, and vice versa. So it is just a different representation of, or different interpretation of the curvature. Okay, no metric tensor as, as far. So uh, in order to describe the active role of uh, gravitational uh, of gravitational field on test bodies on the margin of test bodies, I absolutely do not no, do not need metric. Of course, the metric we know that there is metric. Metric is special relative uh, is uh, electromagnetic. We need uh, metric in order to uh, yeah. okay. But of course. This is only a part of gravity because uh, we, at the moment, we don't know uh, the dynamics of gravitational field. So suppose we are at this stage in the year, say, 1914, and we try to 
invent uh, uh, dynamics of this field. This dynamics should probably come out from a variational principle. Now this variational principle should be uh, coordinate invariant, probably. Therefore, the Lagrangian, first of all, should be a scalar density and should not depend upon cr some crazy uh, combinations of derivatives, but upon uh, curvature. Okay, how to invent such a Lagrangian? It is not an easy job because we don't have metric at our disposal to contract indices and so on and so forth. Now, there should be metric somewhere. Where, where is metric? Okay, fundamental observation, where is metric? If you take a book on gravity, I believe this one is the best, it is a very bad book, but still it is the best one. <laughs> it is the best one. <laughs> okay, so on page, I believe 525 or something like that, you find such a formula that the variation of Lagrangian is Einstein tensor times uh, plus some boundary terms and the authors say that but those boundary terms are not important because uh, we don't need even to calculate them. Uh, now it is uh, already Fock in 1938 observed that for uh, purposes of canonical gravity it is better to co encode a uh, metric tensor not as a covariant but as a contravariant density. My modest contribution is that I also have integrated the uh, gravitational constant with which in the, the, okay so uh, I will use th this representation of the of the metric therefore this uh, formula may be written like that that this is rich oh I know no, this is Hilbert and the variation of of Hilbert Lagrangian is uh, Ricci times delta p plus boundary terms and I have calculated those boundary terms it is not so difficult to see that it is of that form where this pi with four indices is something which is uniquely defined by the metric. It is metric plus some trivial Kronecker deltas. Therefore, we see that uh, uh, metric is something like a momentum canonically conjugate to gamma. Namely, it is a derivative of the Hilbert Lagrangian with respect to derivatives of, of the connection. Okay, so we understand that yeah now let us go back to our job we have to invent the variational principle now the curvature ten tensor splits into three uh, irreducible objects first of all it splits into Vial and uh, and and Ricci, whereas Ricci splits into symmetric and anti-symmetric part. You remember that Ricci is symmet always symmetric, but only if the the connection is metric. But we begin with a uh, connection which is probably non-metric. Therefore, there is always this third component. Okay, so suppose the god is meditating. I would like to invent some nice Lagrangian for my gravity theory. So as a first step, first guess, let us choose a Lagrangian which, which uh, contains only this first part, the symmetric part of the region. Ladies and gentlemen, there is only one possibility. There are no other possibilities to manufacture 
uh, scalar curvature, is it a scalar um, uh, density, having at our disposal the symmetric tensor. However, a constant here is necessary because of, of uh, units. The right uh, the curvature has different units. Okay, so let us take such a Lagrangian and see what happens, which theory comes out of, out of this Lagrangian. Okay, Euler Lagrange equations based on this Lagrangian are, of course, those. However, derivatives of gamma enter into uh, K in a um, linear way. Therefore, the, right, the left hand side will be the derivative of L with respect to this Ricci and there will be some delta. So symbolically the left hand side looks like that. Gammas enter into curvature quadratically, therefore symbolically the right hand side will look like that. So if we define a uh, momentum canonically conjugate to, uh, curva to, uh, to curvature and we interpret it as a metric then oh, <coughs> then on our Euler Lagrange equations may be written like, like that it is very easy this is symbolic and it is very easy to see that the right hand side is precisely what we need to, uh, to upgrade this partial derivative to the, uh, up to the covariant derivative. Therefore, our Euler-Lagrange equations mean that the connection, that the, this metric tensor is, uh, uh, is uh, constant with respect to our gamma. Which simply means that gamma is, yeah. So, in in uh, the standard approach to gravity, this is assumed a priori. But in our approach, this is one of field equations. What are Einstein equations? Einstein equations are contained in the definition of the momentum. If we calculate them carefully, so we see, simply see that metric is proportional to k. Okay, I skip the calculations, it is very easy to solve, which simply means that this is a theory with uh, cosmological constant. Now, this type of, uh, of uh, approach to gravity, I like it very much, I call it purely a fine. Many people have contributed to that. For instance, uh, Schrödinger did something, well, not completely, but he already noticed something like that. Einstein, I, Einstein also. Einstein also, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I believe Schrödinger was the closest to... Okay, yeah. okay. Now, another example of such an approach is uh, Einstein-Maxwell equations. Okay, I just noticed many, many years ago that if you take such a Lagrangian where F is an electromagnetic field, which is just a curl of uh, electromagnetic four potential, and if you take this Lagrangian, so this is exactly, exactly Einstein-Maxwell theory, where again uh, metric is defined as a derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to symmetric part of the region. When you take a determinant, what you mean by that is probably choosing a volume form. You cannot take a determinant without a volume. No, the determinant of a, of a uh, covariant uh, of a co determinant of a matrix. It is not. It is.
square root of the determinant is a scale is not a scalar, it is scalar density. Everything works. But, but there is a mo I mean, don't you need to have a volume for which is constant? No, no, at the moment there is no volume. However, if you uh, then calculate also momenta canonically conjugate, then you obtain metric, and the metric gives you the volume for it. But uh, you, you begin with uh, no metric. You only know electromagnetic field and <coughs> connection and their derivatives, and you take this Lagrangian, and this is precisely Einstein-Maxwell equation. You may believe or not, but this is true. I have proved it many years ago. However, so we have such two uh, nice examples. There are much more of them, but I will concentrate today on these two nice examples of a fine approach to, uh, to gravity. By the way, K with indices up is not I don't write indices with the use of the metric because I don't have metric. This is just an inverse metric. The <laughs> matrix. Okay. And now suppose the god likes this, likes that, and says, okay, let us combine <laughs> everything. We know that uh, uh, the theory with cosmological concept. So what would be the uh, Maxwell uh, Einstein with cosmological constant? Ah, we people, we would probably take the sum of those two Lagrangians. But the God doesn't work this way. The God likes nice compact structure. So I propose you, uh, let us concentrate uh, on case lambda uh, negative, because otherwise the, the, the example will not be as nice. But it is also possible that this is especially nice. Okay, so I, first of all, I propose to integrate this uh, constant into F. Therefore, I denote F capital, the electromagnetic field, multiplied by square root of lambda and so on. So, our Lagrangian is like that. I propose to uh, treat it as an approximation of something like that. One four, force is just approximation of square root. If electromagnetic field is sufficiently small, then it is possible. Now, this object may be calculated from the Born-Infeld trick. You remember Born-Infeld electrodynamics. It was based on the following observation, that if in four dimensions you have two matrices, one is symmetric and the other is anti-symmetric, then the determinant of the identity matrix plus this term, is exactly given by this formula. Now, symmetric is, of course, our Ricci. Anti-symmetric is electromagnetic. So you see that up to uh, fourth order uh, uh, terms, this is nothing but the determinant. So, roughly speaking, This Lagrangian, which we produce naively as a sum of something and something, is an, only an approximation of something which is very nice, namely determinant of the symmetric part of Ricci and <coughs> an anti-symmetric part of Ricci, I would say. It is a very natural way of thinking. That this is just nothing but the determinant of the total Ricci. First pair of Maxwell equations in such a theory is automatically fulfilled. This 
uh, was also a basis of vinyl theory. Vinyl already noticed that. So df is always zero, and this is the source of Maxwell equations. Of course, these are slightly modified Maxwell equations, but for a relatively weak field, this is precisely Einstein, Maxwell with cosmological term. OK, I am, uh, let me see. Keep all of that. Yeah, so roughly speaking, I, uh, Infeld, born Infeld trick was uh, based on, on, on such approximation of the uh, electromagnetic uh, um, Lagrangian. So let me summarize this observation. In 25, Einstein wants to unify both interactions and he says what is gravitation it is uh, something represented by a symmetric tensor what is electromagnetism it is something represented by an anti-symmetric tensor therefore let us add them and he but he did it on the level of metric but of course non-symmetric metric is not a nice geometric object so what I did, I propose to uh, this unification, but on the level of gravity, that where Ricci is in na a natural way has a symmetric and non-symmetric part. Symmetric part is responsible for gravity. Anti-symmetric part is yeah okay. However. So we have already guessed that the Lagrangian based on this three part probably corresponds all of these two parts, namely symmetric Ricci and then the symmetric part of Ricci, can be identified nicely with uh, unified gravity with electromagnetism. However, God doesn't work this way. God would probably take something which unified three uh, parts of the structure. Uh, yeah, so this is gravity, this is electromagnetism. What, what is this? Ha, I don't know. Maybe this uh, black matter. Or, however, it does exist. And it is not plausible to think that God uh, from the very beginning has excluded this part of Ricci. I am finishing. Let me pass to the. Uh, to, this is my last slide. So let us try to invent a Lagrangian which depends upon the entire K or R. I put uh, the Riemann tensor here. So the, we have at our disposal the Levi Civita. This is not tensor. In a notation, notation, it is just collection of. Uh, units and zeros, so this is a tensor density. Mm -hmm. So I made th the first guess would be something like that. This is a beautiful object, but unfortunately, the <laughs> dynamics based on this Lagrangian is trivial because this is a total divergence. Therefore, we have, in order to produce something uh, uh, nice theory, we have to take epsilon twice, which means that this formula doesn't give a scalar density, but it's square. So we must look for a Lagrangian which contains four times r, two times epsilon, and some uh, contractions between them. And indeed, the previous, the previous uh, attempts so if, we, if R contains only gravity and electromagnetism, was really given by that formula. Therefore, I have a tendency, yeah, yeah, so L is square root of that. So I have a tendency to think that the nice theory which describes not only gravity, not only electromagnetism, but also maybe, maybe, 
black energy would be based on such a Lagrangian. Thank you very much. understand the, the question. Affine has a particular meaning in mathematics. Yeah, yeah, so it, is, it means, but be, the, af, af, uh, for instance, Schrodinger in his book called this approach affine, which means that uh, we begin with, uh, with gammas. Gamma is a kind of an affine, local affine uh, structure in space-time because it enables you to uh, translate, uh, to, to shift the vector from one point to the to neighboring point. Of course it is, uh, yeah. It's just a connection, right? So it's basically yeah. connections in right. affine space. Mm -hmm. so, uh, uh, a couple of things. One is that, of course, you need, like, like the previous people, you need to assume that this K is actually the world. Uh, what is the is, key in the workable? I mean, yes, yes. It's non degenerate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Assumption in the of course. Yeah. Yeah. Because you start the connection, the key that we get, yeah. there's no need for it. Yes, of course. You may say that uh, you rest, uh, I restrict myself to this region where K is non degenerate. <coughs> however, however, if you um, take, uh, for instance, Einstein Maxwell, and you begin with initial data, so. The second one was about, uh, I mean, you also had this lambda in the denominator all over the place. Yes. So what happens if I have zero? Uh, yeah, there is, a nice, uh, there is a nice uh, limit when lambda tends to zero. Uh, all this works, however, there will be constraints uh, on, uh, there will be, on the top. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the, uh, so, uh, so you get as a limit a uh, variational principle with constraints with Lagrangian constraints. Did you, did you try another extreme, namely forgetting about this uh, Ricci and only making this fourth rank Lagrangian in terms of value? Yeah, yeah you, you may, I was thinking a little bit, yeah, they are interesting observations, but I believe that physically they are not plausible. But, dark matter, but, but mathematically, of course, it is very interesting. Yeah, 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 that's true. So this is a related question uh, because if you linearize around some yeah. um, data, then U is a spin to field. Yes. So, so, so in some sense, U is a, some artificial spin to field at our disposal. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> mm. I also think that it's nice to know that when we use this, uh, this kind of construction and we want to calculate the metric and solve the Einstein equations, we will have just uh, the rise and Nordstrom solution with the part, uh, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the factors with uh, the fourth power. So it, is, so it produces the uh, rise and Nordstrom solution with the extra uh, parts of lower terms. Which is, of, uh, as I told at the beginning, that this reduces to Einstein uh, Maxwell for relatively weak fields. Yeah. Let us think 